being the director of the National Theatre is very much like being Nelson on top of Nelson's column. The pigeons pass by and you get it. <laughs> <laughs> all or nothing at all. And it was like being Nelson in other ways too. Not much doubt who was steering the ship when the young Peter Hall was directing the Royal Shakespeare Company, which he founded. Weep our sad bosoms empty, let us rather. Yes. And it's, uh, I mean, let's talk technically first before we motivate mm. it. When I first came to work here as a freelance director, you didn't talk to actors about their text. I mean, it was an infringement on their technique. They knew their job. Of course, they didn't, <laughs> because there were at least four different ways of handling a Shakespearean text. As far as Shakespeare goes, yes, I think fashions have changed. Uh, Peter was known as an iambic fundamentalist. He put uh, the rhythm, really. He put the meter, the iambic meter, uh, right at the top of his agenda. And I think now quite a lot of people like something more supple, more overtly naturalistic. But you could not dispute Peter's mastery of Shakespeare. You could not dispute his bone-deep knowledge of the Elizabethan repertoire. In the 1950s, Hall directed the English language premiere of Beckett's Waiting for Godot. We should be prepared to do things which the public won't yet like. Uh, we should be prepared to lead or to guide or to take soundings on where we think the public taste is going. The National Theatre was conceived in the post-war spirit of homes and recreations fit for heroes. I declare this stone well and truly laid. And after it moved to a new brutalist home on the south bank of the Thames, Peter Hall succeeded Olivier as its director. We have tonight begun an adventure which will carry this theatre through many decades indeed perhaps many centuries for you will observe that it is built of very thick concrete Hall had the guile and powers of persuasion of an actor manager and he needed them as a champion of subsidized theater in the days of Mrs Thatcher I think we're now having a dose of monetarism and I think perhaps it's very healthy but there are certain things which will not exist without subsidy, like drains, like libraries, like education, and like theatre. If you say, why will the theatre not exist without subsidy? It is because it is no longer possible to pay for it. It honestly isn't. At one time, Hall would work on a film at his home in the morning with the help of his enthralled editor before going off to the day job. I wonder if we're losing Mrs. Murray's eagerness to be an amateur psychologist. He regretted he didn't make more films after Arkenfeld in 1974. He gets to here somewhere, he trips. Right, he's gonna fall in this lot. So you will appreciate we can only do it once. It was set in his beloved Suffolk and starred a cast of locals. Hall also directed opera at Glyndebourne and elsewhere, including the Met in New York, as a proper Newsnight Arts reporter noted. I asked Sir Peter Hall what happened as the curtain came down. There was a riot. Um, I've never in 30 years actually seen an audience hit each other and uh, yell at each other. About 50 people disliked the production very much in the gallery. They booed, whereupon everybody else cheered. And he's a great operator, and he essentially cornered me into asking him to do a production here at the National to celebrate his 80th birthday. I wasn't really given a choice. And he said what he really liked to do is Twelfth Night, Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. And the person he liked to play, Viola, the central role in Twelfth Night, was Rebecca Hall, great, great actor, happened to be his daughter. And I heard myself saying to him, oh gosh, Rebecca Hall, do you think you can get her? And uh, yeah, he did, he got her. And it was, a, it was a great occasion. I do it because two or three days on each production, there is real creativity in the air where people do things which they didn't know they could do, where they surprise themselves and each other. And insofar as I like power, it is because it gives me the opportunity to create conditions in which that might happen. 